questions from homeworks or whatevers. Nick, you got one? Yeah, can you do number five on the worksheet right there? Sure. All right. So number five from worksheet three, this is what we're looking at, right, Nick? Okay. So again, I'm first going to look for the midline. So since that midline is at y equals 2, it tells me that the k is 2. The amplitude is like that distance from max or min back to the midline. That's 3, so that tells me the a is going to be plus or minus 3. And then the period, I'm going to count from like minimum to minimum. So that's negative pi, so that's like a 1 pi, a 2 pi, a 3 pi, 4 pi. And since the period is 2 pi times c, that tells me c has to be plus or minus 2. And I'm always going to choose the C to be positive. So far, so good? Okay. Um, for sine from the parent function, we're going to pick the point zero, 0, which is a minimum or midline that's in between a min and a max. And from our resultant function, we're going to pick one of the midline points available to us, I think pretty clearly 0, 2 is the one that I, we should choose. And 0, 2 is between a minimum and then a maximum. So that tells me that the A value needs to be positive. And the H value, oops, oh boy. Oh, come now, stupid thing. Nobody's trying to move this. I don't know what you're doing. Okay, and the H value should be zero also. So I can just say y equals 3 sine of 1 over c x minus h plus k. If we're doing the cosine one, the parent function point I'm going to pick is 0, 1, which is a maximum. So for my resultant function, I need to pick one of the extreme points, either the max or the min. Let's say for the sake of argument, we pick the max. Uh-huh. thing is really fighting with me today. Um, this is also maximum because they're both maxes. Again, that tells me that the a is 3. And because we're going from 0 to pi, it tells me that the h is pi. That's everything I need. So I have a cosine of 1 over c x minus h plus k. And I'm done those. It looks easy when you've done it like a hundred times. You know, in fact, a hundred is an undershot probably for how many times I've done these problems.
So it seems like there's a big difference between me and you. It's mostly just experience and practice. If you had thousands of hours of practice doing high school mathematics, you'd be a lot better at it too. <laughs> it's usually how that works. Um, other questions? Yeah, Emily. Same same sheet. Sure. Okay, so same start, midline, tells us K is 1, the amplitude, A is plus or minus 3, the period, so I've gone from negative a quarter, and then a half, and then another quarter. So that's one pi total, one quarter, a half, and a quarter. Does that feel okay? So the period is pi. And since 2 pi c is equal to pi, that tells me c has to be a half. Thanks, dude. Uh, Emily and Jacob. And again, we're always going to pick the C to be positive, right, Em? Okay. okay, for sine from the parent function, we're always going to be using the point 0, 0. From the resultant function, let's say we pick this midline point. Preceding that midline point is a minimum and following it is a maximum. Since both of my points are the same type, it tells me the A value is positive. And because the X coordinate then just tells me my H. So that's everything I need. So Y equals A sine of 1 over C, I'm just going to write that as, instead of 1 over 1 half, I'm just going to write as 2. X minus H plus K. Except that was supposed to be negative 1, isn't it? Mr. Kulik, way to go. Well, I mean, like, we all make mistakes. You didn't catch it. What are you judging me for? No? Okay. Just teasing. Uh, for cosine, we're going to use 0, 1, which is a maximum from the parent function. For my resultant function, I'm either going to pick a maximum or minimum. Let's just say we pick that minimum this time just for grins. Because these are opposite types, max and min, it tells me the A value is negative. And then the H value should be just the same as the x from the resultant, negative pi over 4. So we can say then y equals negative 3 cosine of 1 over c x minus h. Instead of writing it minus I, a negative, I wrote plus. And that ought to do her. Does that feel okay, Em? Okay. So today is going to be our last day in section 3.1.
So in section 3.1, we've done two, three things, or we've done two things so far, right? We've gone from equation to a graph. So for example, if we asked you to graph <coughs> y equals negative 2 sine of um, x over 2 plus pi over uh, 8 minus 1. We'd first start by determining the values for a, c, h, and k. To do that, though, I need to get this into that general transformation form. Yep. So I'm going to factor out a one half. And then rewrite the h value as plus a negative, or minus a negative, excuse me. <coughs> so those are my values for a, c, h, and k. I can use that now to write a transformation map. So that transformation map is cx plus h and then ay plus k and I'm going to apply that to the key points for sine. Where am I getting these points right now? They're coming off the reference point sheet, right? So I'm just looking up for sign my reference points. Those are the points that I just wrote down. Again, because Mr. Kulik's done this a million times, these are all things that he has memorized. But you'll just look that up off the sheet. And now we're just going to push each one of those points through the formula. So 2 times 0 minus pi over 4 is minus pi over 4. Uh, negative 2 times 0 minus 1 is negative 1. 2 times pi over 2 is pi minus pi over 4 is 3 pi over 4. And then negative 2 times 1 minus 1 is negative 3. 2 times pi is 2 pi minus pi over 4 is uh, 7 pi over 4. And then negative 2 times 0 minus 1 again is negative 1. Uh, 3 pi over 2 times 2 is 3 pi. And then minus pi over 4 is 11 pi over 4. Negative 2 times negative 1 minus 1 is 1. And then 2 times 2 pi is 4 pi minus pi over 4 is 15 pi over 4 and then negative 2 times 0 minus 1 is again negative 1. Once I have this uh, I would go ahead and graph So everything is going by fourths, so I would say each tick mark is a fourth. So this is like negative one-fourth, two-fourth, three-fourth, that's negative pi then. One, two, three, four, that's pi. One, two, three, four, that's two pi. One, two, three, four, that's three pi. One, two, three, four, that's four pi. One, two, three, four, that's five pi. We'll stop there. Um, and then I'm just going to graph now. So I have negative pi over four, negative one. Then I have 
3 pi over 4, negative 3. Let's make that a little bit lower. And then we have 7 pi over 4, negative 1. And 11 pi over 4 and positive 1. And then 15 pi over 4, negative 1. So if we connect these, our graph would look like this. Everybody so far so good? Now keep in mind, Mr. Kulik is always going to tell you that you need to extend your graph to fill the space. So there's not a whole lot more space filling, but like this point here, it's going to be the same as this one. So the next spot we should be going down is two is the minimum. So I'm going to go four units over and then two units down to get to my minimum. And then we'll just start kind of heading back up. That's as good as I can do. And the same thing over here, I would go uh, four units over and then one unit up, so, or two units up. So it should be somewhere over there. But we just haven't quite, you know, there's not enough room on my scale to kind of draw it. But this is what your graph should look like. Graphs have scales and tick marks and places where I can see where you've plotted the points that you found in your when you did your uh, transformation. A graph doesn't just look like this. If that's nothing to me, I can't tell what the heck you did, right? So graph should have a scale if you're drawing your own. It should have that scale should have tick marks and labels so I know like how far a tick mark is. I should be able to see clearly where like the points are plotted. Everybody's okay with that? When I looked at your homeworks, your graphs for these were often not very good because they seemed like just kind of like, ah, I'll just draw like a squiggly and then call it a good. If you're gonna draw them on your own, please take some time and make a scale. Use some, you know, Use graph paper if it's available to you. If you're doing it in OneNote, there's nothing wrong with like doing your work on a sheet of paper and then drawing the graph for it in OneNote off to the side or something and just labeling them. That's perfectly fine. Use the graph paper feature. It makes it easier to write. Or use the worksheet with the graph paper already embedded into it. Again, you can do your other work on a separate sheet of paper and just draw the graphs and the worksheet is fine. You know, have it all there so I can see, okay, you know, it doesn't matter to me how you do it as long as all the work is there and like labeled reasonably clearly so I can see like, okay, all that's there. Everybody's okay? Okay. Uh, the second thing we did was we talked about how to go from graph back to an equation. That's what we did on this worksheet three. Do a quick one here. So again, we have something like this. Start by just finding that midline. We'll look for the amplitude next. We'll do a period. So that's Let's see, we have, uh, we're starting at like negative three quarters pi. So that's like one pi to there. And then we end 
over here, that's one more pi, so my period is two pi. So the C there just has to be one, if that's the case, right? Everybody's okay? Each tick mark is a quarter, so I count it up, that's like eight quarters. Okay, um, if I'm gonna do this as a sine function, I'm gonna use the parent function point zero, zero. And then for my resultant function, I'm gonna pick some midline point. Let's say I'm gonna pick this one right here. That's at negative pi over four, comma, negative one. Preceding that midline point is a minimum, and following that midline point is a maximum. That tells me the A is positive. And then the H value should be negative pi over four, the same as the X coordinate for the resultant point. And that's everything I need. Instead of writing minus and negative, I'm just gonna write a plus, right? So far, so good. Uh, if we're doing this as a cosine, the point from our parent function we're going to use is 0, 1, which is a maximum. From our resultant function, then I need to pick some point. Let's say I pick this guy right here at pi over 4, comma, 1. I know that that's a maximum. Since each of these are both maxims, that tells me the A value is positive. And the H value should just be the X coordinate from our resultant. And that's everything I need. To write my equation. And I'm like done. Everybody, again, just like we did on the last assignment, right? So, the last thing that we're going to talk about in section 3.3 is going from a description to an equation. So in the graph, you have like all the information possible. The description is going to be something written in words that may give you a lot of information or not that much information, but your job is going to be to... Uh, um, sort that out and come up with a equation that would pass or would contain all the uh, attributes of the description. So let's do a couple of examples of doing this because it's largely the same ideas of what we've been doing. So it says construct a sinusoid with an amplitude of 4, period of 3 pi, and passes through the point 3 comma 1. When we say a sinusoid, we're talking about a sine or cosine function. Doesn't matter which one. You don't have to do both. You have your choice. So the first thing we want to do is talk about the criteria of like when do we want to pick to use a sine function and when do we want to pick to use a cosine function. Because you can make your life harder or easier by choosing wisely. Okay. Um, in this case, where the or the piece of information that's going to tell us which one to use is going to be the kind of point that you're given. So this point here is just a point, right? We're not told that it has to be at a maximum or a minimum or lie on the midline. It just has to be any old point. In this case, we're going to use a sine function. And we're going to choose 
three one to be that standard midline point. If we do that, the H automatically becomes three and the K automatically becomes one. That knocks out the two most difficult coefficients to get right away, basically for free, by choosing to make a sine function here. Um, the amplitude is 4. That tells me the A should be plus or minus 4. But since we've chosen 3, 1 to be a minimum midline max point that just tells me the a is 4 and I know the period is 3 pi so if the period is 2 pi times the absolute value C if I divide both sides by 2 pi the absolute value C is going to be 3 over 2, so C is just going to be 3 over 2 because we always choose C to be positive. And that's everything I need. So I'll do Y equals 4, sine. And then instead of writing 1 over C here, what would be an easier way to write 1 over 3 over 2? It's write it as the reciprocal, 2 over 3. Exactly right. So that's all I'm going to do. And minus H plus K. And I'm done. Very similar to what we've done here, right? The thing that we need to talk about is like when to choose sine or cosine. And then that's that choice is going to be dependent on what kind of points were given. If you aren't specified the type of point you need to have, you sign, and then just the X and Y or your H and K. Let's look at a different example where this time we're told specifically the kinds of points that we have. So here it says construct a sinusoid that has a minimum value of 510 and its next maximum is at 1532. So here we're told these points have to be one of them's a minimum and one of them's a maximum, right? So let's just kind of start with kind of sketching a little picture of what's going on. So that's like what we have, right? And then like our, to draw like a full period, I would just kind of extend it that way. Everybody feel okay? Now, if I'm given mins and maxes, we're gonna pick cosine to be the parent function. If we're given a midline point, we would pick sine, right? If you're given both a midline point and a max or a min, doesn't really matter which one you choose. Is everybody okay with that? Okay. So let's think about here, the midline would come through like this, right? Everybody agree with that? That's going to be halfway between 10 and 32. So that would be, let's write it this way.
So K it should be 21. Everybody's okay with that? The amplitude is going to be the half the distance between y max and y min. So the a should be then plus or minus 11. Everybody's okay there? So we know about the max and the min, how much of the period is it from a max or from a min to a max like this? What percent of the period? So we have like this is one full. How much do we have? What does it look like? Use your eyeballs. What percent of the period does it look like we have? Half. I agree. In fact, if we go back to our reference points here, so like that's a quarter of your period. That's a quarter of your period, that's a quarter of your period, and then that's a quarter of your period. So we're going from two to four. To do that, we did one quarter, and then another quarter, two quarters is half of a period. This is true for all the key points, is that in between each key point is a quarter of a period. Is everybody okay with that? So we know that one half the period is going to be the distance from um, our x max to our x min. So our x max is 15. Our x min is 10, so that's 5. And then I know the period is 2 pi times the absolute value of c. One half times 2 pi is just pi. If I divide both sides by pi, and we choose the positive result, we have that c is 5 pi over 4. Or I'm sorry, 5 over pi. I don't know where the 4 came from. So far, so good. The last thing we need is to find our h and decide whether our a is positive or negative. So our parent function we chose was cosine. So we're going to use the point 0, 1, which is a max. From our resultant function, then, we can choose to use either point that we're given because they're both extreme points, right? I'm going to choose to use 1532 because it's also a maximum. But you could certainly do it with the other one. Because both points are maximums, that tells us the A is positive. And then the H should be the X coordinate from the resultant. That's going to give us everything we need now. So Y equals A 
times cosine of now instead of writing 1 over C instead of writing 1 over 5 over pi I'm just gonna write that as pi over 5 the reciprocal and then X minus H plus K okay there um, your assignment is gonna be this worksheet 2 so here you're given just descriptions and asked to write the equation for them you should spend the rest of your time here in class working on that um, but before you start doing that, I want to point out something to you guys. So right now we finished section 3.1, right? What haven't we done yet this chapter? Boy, it feels like that's getting close to a good time for one, right? I would, I would expect to see one pretty soon. I would be hope to be fluent with the skills from 3.1 by the time it's homework quiz time. If any of your buddies aren't here today, make sure you let them know that that's in our imminent future. Um, after that, next time, we're going to give you some time to do a Delta Math assignment and or work on some of the book homework problems. But that's going to be the next, the rest of today and the next time. Okay, so what we did today, pretty similar to what we were doing already with the graph, right? It's little, you're given less information, but you're still kind of doing the same process using the same kinds of skills. Um, but that's different enough that I like to break it into two separate lessons because doing it both at the same time is kind of rough, right? It helps to have done one before the other. So that's kind of where we're at. Um, everybody feel good about the plan here? Okay. Yes, so this would be part of Sunday's homework, will be these uh, worksheets two and three. Yes. Um, feel okay? All right, I'm going to stop the recording now and uh, let you guys get to work. If you get